Welcome to the show. We hope you have a blast. Thanks for making time for the Dealer Talk Podcast. What up? Welcome to another episode of the Dealer Talk Podcast. This is your host, Herb Anderson. Thank you so much for tuning in. Today's session is going to be amazing. It's a little bit off of um, strictly the automotive uh, space, but it's going to be a great conversation, um, and I'm very excited to share it with all of you. The guest for today is none other than Mr. Steve Rabinovich. Steve, what's up, man? Hi. Yeah, man. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, this is really, really exciting. Um, so, uh, you know, let's just dive into it right away. We're going to be talking today about financing and in particular the SBA and how you can leverage that to for many different things, whether you're trying to, let's say, remodel your dealership or let's say that you want to uh, potentially purchase a dealership or maybe you need working capital whatever the case may be now in these times obviously uh financing alternatives are going to be um you know something to to be aware of know what your options are and so i'm very very excited for this session steve how about you kick us off with your background just so that people know um kind of what what your experience is okay so i'm born and raised in brooklyn new york um, I have a master's degree in public health and an MBA from Columbia University. I'm an attorney. I went to New York Law School, though I was lucky enough to never practice law. And uh, for the last 40 years, I have been an entrepreneur who started multiple businesses. One of them actually was on a New York Stock Exchange and had a market cap in the 80s of over a billion dollars. And for the last 10 years, I've been the chairman of business funding group, SBA Loan Group, and we are an SBA a lender and packager. Right on. So um, let's talk, I wanted to kind of kick things off with the question about just the SBA in general, because I think that there's either misconception or people don't really know what it is and the okay. alternatives that it provides. So how about we just go 50,000 view? What is the SBA and okay. um, you know, what, you know, how can people leverage it? Like, what does it do? Okay. So in 1953, President Eisenhower recognized that more than 65%, today it's over 80%, of all economic activity emanated from small businesses, okay? Small business, by the way, by their definition today, it's changed over the years, is any business that makes under $5 million a year profit, after-tax profit, averaged over two years. So any business makes under $5 million a year profit is considered a small business. 99% of the 35 million small uh, businesses in the United States are small businesses. So when he formed the SBA, it was to assist small businesses. By 1963, he, they figured out they needed to incentivize banks to loan money to, to small businesses. Banks don't like small businesses. They don't like new businesses. They don't like businesses less than five years old. They don't like businesses in areas that they historically haven't done very well with. They don't like new industries, right? So the way the government induces banks to loan money to businesses is to say that if you follow our rules, and there are a lot of rules, but if you follow our rules and you loan money to a small business, the U.S. government will give the bank between 75 and a 90 percent guarantee, meaning that they can't lose more than 25 percent and in many cases 10 percent of the loan. If you default on the loan, the U.S. government pays off the loan with the bank and then the U.S. government collects it with you, the small business. So that's what a small business loan was. Up until 2011, it was very complex. The maximum you could get was $2 million. There were 900 pages of rules, literally 900 pages wow. of rules. Yeah. They tried to, quote, simplify it as governments simplify things. Sure. <laughs> and they simplified it by making it 500 pages of rules. Uh, so it's still fairly <laughs> complex. And our job is to qualify companies to get loans, maximize the amount they can get, Okay. You can get up to $5 million for real estate and working capital, and you get up to $14 million just for real estate in a separate program. So there's two programs. And that's what we do. We identify companies, we work with you, we find out if you're qualified, and then we maximize the amount you can get. We package your loan. So let's talk about that for a second. So as a business owner, um, you know, regardless of the current landscape, because I want to yeah. get into that here in a minute, but just as a business owner, why why do i want to know why should i know about the sba just you know like why is that an a viable alternative okay especially in rough economic times right but always banks will loan you more 
if they're getting a 75% guarantee than if they're not, right? So banks are induced to make better loans. So if let's say times were great, okay, and you want to go in and just get a loan, right? Working capital loans typically will never be more than five years. They'll be have a lot of covenants, a lot of, you know, ways the loans can be called, right? Mm -hmm. And you probably won't get the most you could get because the bank wants to protect itself. But if 75% of the loan is guaranteed by the U.S. government, they'll lend it to you, okay? And SBA working capital loans are 10 years, not five years. So your monthly payments are half, basically. And it's a very consumer-friendly loan. There's no covenants to the loans, meaning that a loan can only be canceled for non-payment and only non-payment. There's no prepayment penalty to these loans. You can pay it off anytime you want. Okay, and banks can't call the loan unless you don't pay the loan. Right on. So um, now let's talk about, you know, in a situation like where we are today, because, you know, like if you were in a good financial position, let's say in January, right, that kind of isn't necessarily the case today because of, you know, the, the landscape, right? So right. banks are a lot, they're more reluctant to lend. Um, which makes it more challenging for for businesses. How does how is the SBA something that they could leverage during these times? It's exactly why SBA was created to help businesses at times when banks don't want to lend to them. Right. So the bank is induced to lend to you because they're getting a 75 percent to 90 percent guarantee. So they, they're going to loan to you when they would not in bad times. And in fact, we're seeing in the last five, six months, many, many more loans that last year would have been conventional loans. Okay, that they would have just gone straight to the bank and gotten a loan and not come to SBA. But the banks are reluctant to lend. So banks almost always slow down. Except for their A++ stellar clients, they slow down. And that's how SBA, in economically tough times, actually is a perfect vehicle. Have you guys ever, ever done loans for car dealerships? Yes, absolutely. Now, I just want to, there's one thing we don't do. We, we don't do floor planning. Right? Sure. Because floor planning is an industry unto itself. Yeah. It doesn't work within the SBA ecosystem uh, for various reasons, but we can do working capital. The two biggest uses, and we've probably done 45 or 50 dealerships, the two biggest uses are acquisition to buy it, where you can actually buy it with 10% down. Those, If there's real estate involved, those transactions can be 25 years, if not 10 years. And the second biggest use is we've helped many, many dealers buy the building they're in buy their showroom to build equity in their business. Okay. And, and ultimately your rent might even be less sure. because your mortgage could be less than your rent. So we've done a lot of those and that's how you build equity long-term in your business. Yeah. And let's talk about that for a second too, because I think this is a, it's an interesting point that you could, um, and I mean, obviously correct me if I'm, if I'm mistaken here, but you can purchase, you can use SBA to purchase a building and at the same time have enough money left over that you can actually use to work. Yes. For advertising reasons or purposes, I mean, for payroll or whatever. Okay. So good question. So as long as your cash flow supports the loan, right, you can do two things. A, we can actually buy the building with no money down, 100% guarantee uh, uh, purchase price, loan to value, right? Yeah. If you buy, if you go to a commercial bank to just take a loan on, to buy a building, you have to put today between 30 and 40% down. Here, we can get you 100% financing, right? And if your cash flow allows it, up to 49% of the loan can be for working capital, as long as 51% of the loan is to buy the building. And then the whole loan is amortized over 25 years. I mentioned that working capital loans are 10 years, real estate loans are 25 years. But if real estate's involved with working capital, as long as the working capital is $1 more than 50%, that the, 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 I mean, the purchase price of the building is $1 more than 50%, then 100% of the loan is 25 year amortization. Wow. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's even a better, better setup. Now, um, I know a couple of dealers that have gone the SBA route. And so I wanted to ask about um, what happens if you have a loan? Because for real estate, you can get up to $14 million, right? right? So let's say that you have a, a, a loan already for $5 million. Can, is Can you still go for the, for the remainder? Okay. For, for, a, for a $9 million loan or, or another $5 million loan if you're trying to expand your business? Yeah, I mean, if you already have an SBA. Yeah. Right. So you can go up to a cap of $5 million, right? But 
the five million dollars in a 504 loan to buy a building actually supports a 14 million dollar loan because it's done a little differently sure. so uh the answer is yes whatever you have left you can do another loan on, and we do a lot of those yeah we so, usually leave the existing SBA loan in place. It's not so easy to pay that off mm -hmm. and then just do another one on top of it as long as it aggregates to the legal maximum. Right. So I just want to emphasize that because if you if you're listening to this and you're thinking, well, I already have one and, you know, I, I wouldn't. That's not something that applies to me. Like um, it, it could qual you could qualify. It could definitely be something that, that you, yes. could, you could definitely leverage. So don't you know, don't think that you that, right. that option is closed. Right. And the, the, I think one of the basic principles of whenever you're financing your business is always explore all opportunities. Don't assume anything can't be done and spend five or 10 minutes with Herb or us on the telephone. And we'll be able to tell you if we can help you or not. And if we can't, we'll tell you if there's a possibility that we could help you and what circumstances it would take yeah. for that to happen. Yeah. So so let, let, let's kind of moving things along here a little bit. Like how, you know, just state of the, of, of the industry, right? Not, not just so much automotive, but just business in general, how, you know, and I, obviously nobody has a crystal ball, but where do you see things going here? You know, okay. probably the next six months, like where do you think we're going to be in a situation where, where it may be wise for us to leverage um, financing opportunities now? Okay. So I'm betraying my age, but I have been active since the 1987 stock market crash. So I lived through the 1987 <laughs> crash. I lived through the 93, 94 crash. I lived through the tech bubble bust in early 2000. I lived through 2008 and nine, right? So cycles always happen. Cycles have happened in America since 1802. Every 10 or 15 years, there's a, there's a recession depression, sure, right? Yeah. This is a highly unusual situation because it's not intrinsic economic factors that caused a depression. It was a pandemic, right? So nobody knows today how long this is going to last, right? And you know, the, if you've been listening to the news, they talk about a V-shaped recovery, right? Which means you hit bottom and because the intrinsic of the economy are strong, you go right back up, right? Mm -hmm. The evidence seems to show that might happen because we had 18 and a half percent unemployment. We started at 3 percent before this happened. Sure, yeah. 18 and a half, we're down to 8 percent. And, you know, unless COVID comes back and closes the world again, there's a good chance the economy will come back, right? But it might not. It might take a few years, right? But I think if every business, and by the way, I've made every business mistake one can make in life, so therefore I'm experienced, right? <laughs> so I know what not to do a second time, right? Always think three things about your business at all times. Protect your business, grow your business, and try to build equity in your business, right? Build equity in your business, the last one is the easiest, buy real estate. That's the simplest, best way to build equity besides the, you know, the, the turnover in your business is to own real estate. So always try to buy real estate. Let's go to protect, right? You woke up on January 1st, 2020. And if I said to you, okay, I'll interview you for a second. What could go wrong this year? You would have never said a pandemic. No, no, no. Okay. Sure. Never. Okay. No. But anything can go wrong at any time, right? So protect always means have enough money in the bank because there's a golden rule of borrowing. When you need it, you don't get it. When you don't need it, everyone wants to give it to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I say at least put six months of operating cash away at all times if there's emergencies. And it's not just for emergencies. It's also for opportunities, right? Because remember, Newton's law of physics, the second law of physics is for every reaction, there's an equal and opposite reaction, right? So I'll give you a couple COVID examples, right? As horrible as COVID is, okay, my commute went from an hour and 45 minutes to 45 minutes, okay? <laughs> so there's always something good and something bad, right? So here, what happens good, Well, right? I'll tell you what happens good. The businesses that are economically stressed create opportunities for the better run businesses. So this is the time to look at other dealerships. This is the time to see who's in trouble. This is the time to look up, maybe to pick, pick up cheap inventory. This is the time to look to grow your business, right? So protect your business, then look to grow your business, right? And you can only grow a business in two ways, right? You can only grow it internally, make it bigger, or externally, go buy something, mm -hmm. right? We're available to help with both. Yeah. And then the third maxim I always have is build equity, build equity, build equity, and buy real estate whenever you can. Sure. So 
that's that's I would say is the overview, right? Nobody really knows what's going to happen, but if you follow those three simple rules, you really can't go wrong, right? Mm -hmm. You can't go wrong if you have enough money in the bank to protect yourself. You'll live through it, and those who live through it will do exceedingly well, right? Like, like, let's take a quick example. Let's look at the restaurant business, right? The restaurant business now is absolutely today the worst business to be in, right? Because well, sure. they're all closed. Yeah. But here is what's going to happen. Having lived through all these economic cycles, I can tell you the certainty of what's going to happen. Some percentage of restaurants are going to go out of business. Some of them are going to have good locations. They're going to be built out, right? The better operators, when the dust settles, will start buying those spaces and those leaseholds and pay $0.05, cents, $0.10, cents, $0.15 cents on the dollar and end up three years from now with a better restaurant. We don't have less people. People are going to eat. So unless COVID kills 200 million people, like uh, Vice President Biden said it, might, it did, okay, it's probably not going to do that. So therefore, people are always going to need restaurants. And the number of restaurants we have today, 30% might go out of business. But five years from now, they'll all be back in business under different owners. Sure. So look for those opportunities. And I don't think it's any different in the automotive industry. Yeah, you touched on something that I, that I want to expand on because it's... it's it's definitely worth uh, exploring here a little bit. And that's the the idea that there's going to be opportunities to leverage the situation to purchase some dealers, right? In these times, kind of like the weaker players are exposed, right? Yes. So it's a prime opportunity to, um, you know, just buy up some stores or, you know. A hundred percent. It's, you know, the, things go back to basic principles, right? So Darwin's basic principle is the survival of the fittest, right? Mm -hmm. That's how, how the animal kingdom rose up, right? The, the, the weaker animals died, the stronger animals got stronger because they were stronger. They had better children. Those children grew up and, you know, you have, that's how you build things. No different in business. The, the better operators survive. And to survive, you have to think ahead, right? Think ahead, protect, grow, build equity. Those three things, if you just always keep the picture on that, always have enough cash around for emergencies, always have enough cash around for opportunities, right? Especially with SBA loans, because there's no prepayment penalty. Take more than you need. Give it back in a year if you don't need it. Yeah, exactly. Right? So what do you do? Pay a little interest? Right now, interest rates in SBA loans are capped at 2.75 over prime for non-real estate, okay? Prime's gone down to three and a quarter. It's not coming back up for five years. Yeah. So 6% is the most you're going to pay. Take the money, put it on the side. You don't use it a year from now, pay it back. Exactly. No, oh, yeah, that makes total sense. So let's talk about the process too, because I think right. that scares people a little bit. You know, obviously it's a it's a government um, funded type of an initiative, and that typically requires lengthy processes. Right. If somebody's thinking about either you know taking market share or maybe as a as a decision maker at a current dealership maybe thinking about hey maybe I, maybe now is the time for me to own my own or whatever what's that process look like okay so the the process is very much guided by our client if our client is organized and if you have the things that we need and what drives sba loans are tax returns right mm -hmm. to qualify for an sba loan is broken into two halves what they call character, or what they call ability to repay. Character is your credit score, your whether you've ever been in a bankruptcy, which makes it very difficult to do an SBA loan. If you have any judgments against you, makes it very difficult to do an SBA loan. If you've ever defaulted on a government loan, you can't get an SBA loan. If you've ever, God forbid, done jail time, that's okay, as long as you tell the SBA and you go through a process on that, right? And, and credit score-wise, 700 is what they look for, but there are many mitigating circumstances where we can do it when it's less. Once you get past character, which we can ascertain in a five-minute telephone call, okay, as long as you're candid, what I always say is we can handle any problem except one. The one problem we can never handle is surprise. So if you don't tell us there was a problem, but you tell us when we're ready to close the loan, the loan's going to get killed. Yeah. But if you tell us in advance, we tell the bank, and then there's no surprises. Okay. Now let's go to cash flow. Cash flow is based on the last three years of your tax returns and the interim financials of your current year. Okay. Um, you don't have to cash flow in every year, but you must cash flow in the last tax year. If you don't, it'd be very difficult to get an SBA. Okay. The rule of thumb, okay, there's a lot of exceptions to this, and we'll help you figure it out, but the rule of thumb is every $20,000 of taxable income, right, every 
$20,000 of pre-tax income qualifies you for roughly a $100,000 10-year loan. Every $7,500 qualifies you for a $100,000 real estate loan because the real estate loans are 25 years versus 10. Right. So the amortization is you need less cash right, sure. to pay interest. So um, because you're paying over a longer period of time. So 20,000. So if you made 200,000 last year, right, that's 10 times 20, you're probably eligible for a million dollars, right? There are other issues like collateral, because if you own loans over $350,000, if there is any collateral like equity in a home, you have to pledge it, right? So there are rules, but, but basically we can qualify you in a half hour. Now, how long does it take from that half hour? So now you decide, and we only get a fee, by the way, if we close a deal. We do sometimes ask for a small retainer, but we give it back if the loan doesn't close. It can take as little as six weeks. It can take as long as forever. It all depends on the data. We give you a list of what we need. That It's not magic. You're going to need three years of tax returns. We're going to need your current financials. We're going to need a personal financial statement. We're going to need three months of bank statements. Okay. And we're going to need like formation documents for your company and that sort of thing. Right. There's a franchise agreement. We have to see that. We give you the list. You get the list to us. We package the loan. We do your spreads. We bring it to a bank. We have ownership in one bank, but we deal with 30 banks around the country. And that relationship, I kind of wanted to emphasize it because if you've ever done an S, if you've ever gone through the SBA process and got denied, you know how complex that is, right? Because what happens is you you can apply, and if you get denied, you have to start that process Correct. all over again. So with, with us, with a company like SBA Funding, you um, you don't have to go through that, right? Because we we were we have a network of, of banks that we can you know pretty much shop your profile of customers at. Correct. And once we have your data, it's all online, so we can we we fill out your applications, right? So we can fill out applications for multiple banks. Now we go to one at a time, but our hit rate when a when we show it to a bank and a bank says they're interested in doing it, ninety seven percent of the loans close. Only 3% that don't close is the thing I said earlier. Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> you forgot to tell us something. You forgot to tell us you had a DWI when you were 18 years old. Yeah. You're 39 now. Who cares? But because you didn't tell us, it spooks the bank. The loan don't happen. Yeah. yeah. So, um, okay. So provided everything's in order, you get the, 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 the prospect sends you everything, right. you know, like how, you know, start to finish. What are we talking about? Okay. So, you know, I tell everybody 12 weeks, it can happen sooner. Again, you know, the, the banks we work with, because we're a large provider of loans, we're probably one of the largest in the countries, we can get you an answer. So from the day we get everything from you, one week later, we have a file. After we give it to a bank, one more week to get an okay, okay, another week to get a commitment letter. Once you get a commitment, now we're three weeks into it. Once there's a commitment letter, it goes into the SBA for authorization. That has been taking as little as a week, but now because of the end of the year and because of the uh, backup, because of COVID loans and that sort of thing, it's it took as much as four weeks, right? Then we go into closing. Closing can take one week to how long, how long it takes, you know? It could be pretty quick. So I tell everybody 12 weeks, but it can often be much quicker. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I wanted to emphasize that because I think a lot of people – uh, the, another thing that might deter is that, well, it's going to take forever. And, you know, maybe by the time I go through that process, the, it, I'm in a different situation. I'm in a different place, but it's, it's, it's quicker than, than you may, than you might think. And then when you think about sure. the amounts, like you could get up to $5 million for working capital up to $14 million for, for real estate. Like that's, that's a considerable amount of money Correct. Um, in a short period of time, you know, to, to, you know, yeah. do whatever it is that your, your objective is. Right. And you don't have to take it all at one time. Either. You can do multiple loans again, as long as you don't go past the cap. Sure. So very often I'd say 50% of our clients get a second loan, right? They take a million five they need now their, their numbers justify a million five. They put the money to work a year later on the next tax return. They get another loan. Very common. Um, so yeah, I mean, Let's talk about um, kind of what that does as far as, you know, like, you know, because I get questions sometimes about, can we use this to refinance? Can we, you know, if somebody's thinking about in those terms, because I know right now with COVID and everything, people are thinking a lot about that, you know, refinancing things and, and so forth. Is that, is, is that a viable? The basic rule to refinance is 
there has to be a reason to refinance. So there's two real reasons. Your interest rates are much higher. So you're paying 12%, we're getting you 6%, we can refinance it, right? The other one is you're in the last year of a five-year loan, so it's going to come to terms soon, right? The ones that are difficult to finance are very low-cost long-term loans. So if you took an SBA loan last year, we can't really refinance that. We can get you another one, right? If you have money out there at 3%, why would you want to refinance it at 6%, right? So, so, But we can do refinance. I'd say refinance is are involved in 50% of our loans. Okay, awesome. So um, moving things along here, we're getting close One to more thing, time. you can also refinance the building you own if you own it already. So if you own a building already and you have equity in it, we can do a refinance. There's rules related to it, so you have to speak to us, but we can do that too. Okay, that's a good point too, because I know yeah. a lot of dealerships are in yeah. that situation. So, And then you talked earlier, let, let's kind of expand on this a little bit too, because you talked about earlier, like you could potentially get um you pay less rent right so um let's say that a dealership is in their in their current building right now and they don't own it um and they go through the sba process to get um to purchase it um is that is that kind of how the math works for it to be a less uh, yeah payment? so what happens is okay so first there's a concept in sba called ad backs right so if you made three hundred thousand last year but you paid 100000 in rent, right? When you're buying a building, you're no longer going to have the rent. You can add back to rent. So now instead of 300000 in cash flow to buy a building, you have 400000 mm -hmm. to buy a building, right? And if you remember the rule of thumb, you know, where um, every uh, $7,500 equals 100000 every 75000 equals a million, right? The three hundred goes to four hundred. You can now buy a four or five million dollar building. building. Yeah. And often, I'm not going to say always, but often your your mortgage payments, along with the taxes that go along with it, will be very close to what your rent is. Sometimes less, sometimes a little more, but not that much more. Yeah. And you're now, excuse my expression, you're not pissing money away. You're not paying rent where you sure. own nothing at the end of the month. Yeah. You're paying down a loan where you own the building. Exactly. Yeah, that's the quickest way to expand your business, right? Correct. To to own the right, you know, own the real estate. Right. That's also the equity part. Remember, protect, grow, build equity. Right. Sure. You don't build equity with rent. You build equity by owning real estate. Absolutely. All right. So we're we're getting close to that time. There is one question that I ask everybody that comes on the show, but before we 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 ask that question, I just wanted to you know, again, fifty thousand view. Um, for any decision maker out there in particular that's maybe looking to, um, maybe they've been a GM at a dealership for a really long time and they're looking to buy their 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 dealership and they see this podcast and they're like, and hey, at first I didn't know that the SBA was a, was a viable alternative. Right. I don't even know how that would work. How can somebody in that position purchase a, an existing dealership that's cash flowing? Um, like, what's that process? Okay. Like? All the time we do it, okay? And there's two scenarios. You own none of the dealership now, and you're gonna buy it from the partner, right? The only SBA rule there is they have to sell you 100% of it. They can't keep any of it, okay? Um, that's that's num number one, okay? Um, if you own some of it now, let's say you own 20% and your senior partner owns 80%, you can buy the 80%, right? And it's just like any other loan. We look at the cash flow. We look at the numbers and we can get you that loan down. You have to put 10% down. And in some cases, okay. Okay. So there's a concept in buying a building. Because very often the seller will hold a note, right? A seller's note. So let's say you're paying $5 million and the owner is willing to hold a $2 million note. We only have to finance 3 million. The SBA loan has to come first. You can make payments on the seller's note as long as you're in compliance with the SBA. But the seller's note has to be what's called subordinated behind the SBA loan. We do this all the time. Um, the single best way to start any of these processes is call us. You call us, we'll talk to you, we'll figure out what we can do to help you. Because, again, we're a success fee company, meaning we don't make any money unless we get you the loan, it's a win-win scenario. We have commonality of interest. Sure. And what about the, 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 the individual? What does the individual need to have? Because the business on itself is going to be analyzed. Okay. Is this business cash flow or not? The individual needs to have what in order to okay. make this work? Credit score of, let's say, 700 or better. If it's a little less, we could talk to you why. Okay. If the loan's more than 350000 which they all will be, 
you have to have some collateral, okay? The collateral, most of the collateral can actually be the dealership building if they own the building, right? If they don't own the building, it could be an issue, right? But every loan has to have collateral, right? Every bank has what's called an air ball. An air ball is the amount of the uncollateralized loan that they're willing to finance, right? So let's say it's a $3 million loan and there's $2 million of collateral. That's a $1 million air ball, right? That's about the limit on many banks, $1 million air ball, right? So you have to, how do you make up the difference? You can make up the difference with, let's say, equity in your personal property. Mm -hmm. You make up the difference with the inventory, not in car dealers because the inventory doesn't belong to you, it belongs sure. to, the, to, the, to the floor planning. But, you know, but in typical businesses, you can get 10% of inventory, you can get 10% of receivables, that sort of thing, right? And then we sit with you and help find the right bank to do your loan. Not every loan can get done. We'll tell you straight out, not every loan can get done. We don't waste 10 weeks of your time. We, we pride ourselves on telling you early that it can't get done. Right. When we say it can get done, as long as all the information you gave us is correct to what you told us, again, there's a near 100% chance we'll get the loan done. That's awesome. All right. So, Steve, thanks so much for doing man. Oh, I really appreciate you. it. This, this has been awesome. I think it's very educational, and I think there's a lot of people listening to this that are, that are going to really find value in this information. Great. Thank you. Um, now, there is one question that I ask everybody that okay. comes on the show. The and, Yankees are going to win. Yeah. Is that the question? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Not quite, but right. I am going to test your business okay. acumen. Okay. So, um, where do you see the automotive industry headed in the next five years and why? Okay, so I am a great believer in the fact that what has driven our economy since 1945 are baby boomers, right? Baby boomers are people who were born from 1945 to 1960, right? So the youngest baby boom, boomer is 60 years old. The oldest baby boomer is 75 years old. Mm -hmm. That cohort segment of the population has driven everything, okay? I say that right now, put COVID aside for a minute, right? Because that population is getting older, right? Populations, it's called a cohort, a section of the population. They have the most wealth they're going to have as they get older, right? Because they've accumulated success. If they're sure. a failure, they don't have it. But if they have success, they have it, right? Yeah. I see the trend lines for the automotive industry being very positive. I see recreational vehicles being a big trend up once we get past COVID, right? I actually see higher-end automobiles a big end up. And I see safer, bigger cars versus smaller cars for older people because as they get older, they're more dangerous on the road. They should have a bigger, more heavier car, right? <laughs> but I actually think, you know, the automotive industry is an indicator of how the economy is going and, and, and it's also a driver. So sure. I actually think, you know, based if we can have that V-shape recovery, meaning that COVID doesn't come back and close the world again for a year, that we get a vaccine and get it out sometime next year. I think we're going to see a recovery. And I think in the second year of that recovery, we'll be back to where we were on January 1st, 2020. And we woke up and we had one of the greatest economies we've ever had since World War II. Amazing. There it is, folks. Steve Rabinovich, everybody. Thank you so much again for doing this. That's all the time we have for today. And as usual, we'll talk later. We only host the well respected. The vendor Lexus Nexus. We don't sell digital marketing. What you do? We inspected with our DT vendor management solutions. We come in like the EPA to clear out the pollution. Take the trash. Oh, keep your PL clean. Your inventory